We've got breaking news from Venezuela. Reuters now reporting that the Supreme Court there is blocking opposition leader Juan Guaido from leaving Venezuela. The Supreme Court is saying it is going to put a travel ban on him, financial restrictions, and freeze his bank accounts. This is a fast-moving situation. Let's bring in retired General uh, Jerry Boykin and former Deputy Secretary of Defense and Intelligence. That was Jerry's, uh, gen the general's prior title. Also, James Carafano of the Heritage Foundation. General, your reaction to this news? Well, I, I'm not surprised. I think that it's uh, further evidence that... Uh, that Maduro still controls uh, major parts of, uh, of the illegitimate government there, and I'd say the Supreme Court uh, has just demonstrated that they're part of that. Uh, sir, Mr. Carafano, what did you think of John Bolting having, having the words 5,000 troops to Colombia on his notepad uh, shown on television yesterday in light of what's now going on in Venezuela? Yeah, I, I don't know why that was on the notepad, and, and I completely ignore it. I mean, we've got more than enough to know about what's going on in this administration's policy, and I think it's actually been really, really good at, at pressuring Maduro. I don't understand what the Supreme Court is doing here. This seems to me to be nuts. I mean, keeping the guy in the country actually makes it harder, and God forbid they actually arrested him. There are millions of people in the street that would rise up, so I think they've got the tiger by the tail. They'd actually be better off if he left the country. Yeah, the first Supreme Court in Venezuela, we should point out, is in exile. Uh, we don't know if Maduro is going to leave peacefully, General, on an exit ramp. Looks like he's not, like Ferdinand, Cast uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcos did. Correct me here, General. Let's get to what's going on overall and who the players here are. Does Russia seek to destabilize this region to its benefit? I mean, Russia's lent Venezuela a ton of money. It's now breaking news saying to Venezuela, you owe us a big $100 million payment by March 1st. you got to pay up. Does, does it want to create another Syria in the backyard of the U.S. and destabilize the region? Well, that's always been, I think, a goal of the Russians. But look, they've got some major financial and economic interests there. And uh, I, I think that uh, it's also an opportunity for them to uh, become entrenched in the Western Hemisphere, which they've been trying to do through the uh, military exercises and so forth. So uh, a, a leader uh, like uh, Guaido that would uh, not support Russia, I think, would be an impediment to what they're trying to achieve there. Yeah, and to the general's point, James, um, Russia's economy is about the size of Texas. Texas's economy is the same as uh, Russia in terms of size. Russia has been pushing to stitch together under its sphere of influence the world's oil players, including Venezuela, to dominate the oil market. We know that, James. I mean, where does this lead? Where is this headed, do you think? Yeah, I look, I don't take that real seriously. Caracas is a long way from Moscow. Syria and Crimea are in Russia's backyard. But for them to go half a world away and try to take over or manage a country that's in chaos with several million people, I, I mean, that's ridiculous. They couldn't, the Soviet Union couldn't handle Afghanistan. Yeah. I doubt v Russia could eat Venezuela. Yeah, that's twice the size of Iraq. We'll be right back with more in this breaking news now coming out of Venezuela seeking to block Juan Guaido from leaving the country, freezing his assets and also his bank accounts. We've got more breaking news on this story on this developing crisis in Venezuela. Coming up.